So my name is uh, Milind Tambe, and I'm going to talk about how AI can help in protecting forest, fish, and wildlife. So we all know the terrible stats about uh, poaching of elephants and rhinos, but uh, to understand the problem, I'll focus on Murchison Falls National Park in Uganda, which I visited in 2014 to establish a collaboration there. So there's magnificent uh, animals there, and, uh, but there's threats to the wildlife. So I'm waiting for the videos to show up. Um, but there are these uh, threats to the wildlife. For example, this is a snare that the poachers use to trap these animals. In fact, thousands of these snares just in 2014 alone that I was shown. So there's these massive threats. And what can AI do to help protect wildlife? There's a lot. But I'll focus on one particular system we've been building at USC called Pause Protection Assistant for Wildlife Security. The particular challenge we focus on is that we have massive forest areas, thousands of square miles to protect but limited security resources. So the question becomes how to efficiently patrol or protect these vast areas with limited resources. Here's pictures from Bangladesh and Indonesia, two places uh, we visited, and this is a worldwide problem. So PAUSE focuses on efficiently generating patrols using past data of poaching to predict future attacks, and as well as generating patrols that avoid predictability uh, from poachers. So in building PAUSE, we build upon past successful deployments of AI-based decision aids for security in urban settings. These are based on game theory. The first application of this we built was at the LX International Airport, where the, this is one of the first applications, really, of game theory for security. The challenge is that there's inbound roads, but not enough officers to be at all roads at all times. So setting up randomized checkpoints allowed us sometimes to capture large number, uh, people carrying large numbers of weapons into the airport. Underlying this is uh, game theory. Uh, this is a way of understanding conflict between two intelligent agents. This is rock, paper, and scissors. Putting uh, rewards and penalties uh, for rock, paper, and scissors. Of course, you can analyze and say, you know, player A should play rock, paper, and scissors with a frequency of one third each to keep, uh, uh, keep being unpredictable. The game at the airport is more complex. There's more complex rewards and penalties, but we can solve it to generate randomized schedules for police officers. And this is the armor system that we deployed in 2007 and is still in operation. The next decision aid, for example, for the Federal Air Marshal Service assigns air marshals to flights on a randomized basis, taking into account the risks of different flights. Uh, this is still operational in the international sector since uh, 2009. We also built a similar decision aid for the US Coast Guard, generating patrols in different ports. And around the Staten Island Ferry, carrying 60,000 passengers a day, this is a big terrorist target. So the Coast Guard run these patrols. These are our algorithms at work using game theory and have radically changed the Coast Guard tactics around these. Uh, and the list goes on. There's uh, patrols on trains and so forth. In fact, there are worldwide uh, applications, including other universities now, now who are using these game theoretic applications, for example, in Argentina and Chile and so forth. Um, there's been a significant impact in improving security operations. I'll just point out two quick uh, numbers here. One, control tests on ticketless travelers uh, in Los Angeles metro trains. Game theoretic approaches versus previous methods showing that our approach has led to 60% improvement in capture rates of uh, ticketless travelers. And then at the LAX checkpoints with the armor system, you see for the red bar versus the others, there's a five-fold immediate increase in the numbers of arrests at these checkpoints when it was first deployed making the LX uh, officers very happy, of course. Um, this has led to significant appreciation in different security agencies leading our work to be mentioned in different uh, committee hearings. Here's one. Oops, sound. As a way of optimizing it. So let me play again. We're working with the University of Southern California to uh, utilize game theory as a way of optimizing and scheduling our patrol makes it harder for somebody to anticipate where the patrols will be. So now the question we are asking is how can, how can we take the same technology and use it for wildlife protection? And that's the question asked in pause. We divide up the forest area into grid squares. Each grid square is a target uh, where a poacher may strike. And so now using game theory, we can calculate randomized patrols. How frequently should we patrol each grid square? When poachers attack target, we get data. From that data, we can then predict where poachers may strike next. And that allows us then to improve our patrols. So 
posits a combination of this game theory and poacher behavior prediction. For poacher behavior prediction, we have uh, 12 years of data from Queen Elizabeth National Park in Uganda, 125,000 observations. Um, we have other data as well, but from this one, for example, we can start building up a model. How likely is it that a poacher may attack uh, different grid cells? This can be done using factors like uh, range of patrol frequency, animal density, distance to rivers and roads, and so forth. So we've built this model, and it's more, we can show that it's more accurate than other methods of predicting where poachers may strike. So our initial system was built using game theory and this uh, poacher behavior prediction. And it was uh, tested in uh, Uganda and then in Malaysia with our collaborators, uh, NGO called Panthera. And uh, one of the things that they pointed out to us is uh, we needed to really pay attention to geography. The shortest distance between two points uh, when patrolling is not a straight line. So we didn't quite understand that, so we went ourselves to Malaysia to understand what was going on. So this is the day we patrolled. Uh, this is me and my uh, students. You can see how happy we are. We are getting to patrol in Malaysia in a forest, uh, hacking through the forest, uh, seeing a poacher's camp, and then at the end of the day, completely exhausted, uh, but understanding that the shortest distance between two points when patrolling is not a straight line. There's a hidden street map in the forest following ridge lines and riverbed that we need to follow. So pause is now a combination of game theory, poacher behavior prediction, and forest street maps. This system was again tested initially in Malaysia. Uh, here are some signs of poaching, poachers left behind uh, uh, lighters and so forth. And what this is showing is that uh, human activity signs uh, found by pause was higher than previous patrolling methods. But there is a more extensive uh, tests that are being planned now with Wildlife Conservation Society in Uganda. This is a site in Queen Elizabeth National Park where we plan to test PAWS, as well as with Panthera and World Wildlife Fund in India and in other areas of Southeast Asia. But there are m many other possible applications of use of AI and game theory. With AVG, a non-governmental organization, we are working in Madagascar for protection of forests. With the US Coast Guard, we generated patrols to protect fisheries in the Gulf of Mexico and with others, others in India, the focus was the uh, randomized factory inspections uh, to reduce river pollution. So the potential of using AI and game theory for social good is vast. I've touched on a few applications, but there are many more. Uh, and not only for forest protection and animals and wild and uh, fisheries and so forth, but coral reef protection or river water pollution prevention or drug design and so on. Thank you.